Hi, my name is Oktay. Uh, welcome to today's video about the superconductor LK99. In today's video, I will discuss uh, new papers about this uh, new material, new compound. This is a picture of LK99. It was discovered by Suk Ba Li, Yi Hong Kim, and Jung Wan Kwon in 1999. That's why it has a number 99. Uh, the letters LK are the initials of the last names. He is a scientist. LK99 is a uh, Lead appetite, which is, which is doped with uh, copper ions. They have the, a similar uh, group of compounds uh, as uh, hydroxyapatite, which is a mineral in bones and teeth. Uh, this is the formula of LK99. Uh, the X is important. Uh, it has to be between 0 0.9 to 1.1. So one tenth of the lead ions are replaced by copper ions. LK99 is a lead copper phosphate oxide. It's a non stoichiometric compound. Uh, critical temperature is 127 degrees Celsius. And these elements are all quite cheap. There's a big advantage, economic advantage. And according to the scientists, uh, this is a superconductor at room temperature and ambient pressure 1 bar. This is the synthesis of LK99. First step is synthesis of lanarkite at 725 degrees Celsius from lead oxide and lead sulfate. Second step is synthesis of Copper phosphide from the elements at 550 degrees Celsius. Third step is the synthesis of LK99 from lanarkite, uh, copper phosphide, oxygen. Now, vacuum tube, tube. This is a redox reaction at 925 degrees Celsius. This gives you LK99 and byproduct is sulfur. This is the structure of LK99. It is a modified lead appetite. There are inner and outer columns of uh, lead ions. And experimental um, measurements showed um, this, that doping with uh, copper ions uh, gives you a, a smaller volume by min uh, minus 0.48%. This is um, what happens with LK99. Um, the substitution happens at the outer uh, lead ions, not inner lead ions. This causes a shrinkage and stress. Uh, this produces quantum wells, and this makes this LK99 material a superconductor. And the reason is um, copper ions are significantly smaller than the lead. This is another picture of the meissner oxenfeld effect of LK99. What is special about this picture is there is no liquid nitrogen involved because you don't need it anymore. And the meissner oxenfeld effect is an expulsion of a magnetic field in a superconductor once it has a temperature that is below the critical temperature. And the critical temperature of LK99 is 127 degrees Celsius. This effect was discovered by Walter Meissner and Robert Oxenfeld in the year 1933. This is one important uh, principle in quantum mechanics, that's the Pauli exclusion principle. This was uh, invented by Wolfgang Pauli. He lived from 1900 to 1958. He was the winner of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1945. The Pauli exclusion principle says that two identical half-integer spins, spin particles, like the electrons, cannot have the same quantum state. And the consequence of this Pauli exclusion principle are the bands and structures, the valence band and the conduction band. This is a picture of um, three possible structures. At the right, you have an insulator. In the middle, that's a semiconductor with a very small band gap. And the band gap can be modified uh, by Doping. And at the left, that's a metal. Um, there's a new paper from uh, John Van Lai, Yang Xu Li, Pai Tao Liu, Yan Sun, and Xing Chu Chen from China. They made a first principle study on the electronic structure of LK99. And they uh, would show that the copper doping uh, leads to a transition, makes a lead appetite a metal, makes insulator lead appetite into a metal, conducting metal. And you can here see the Fermi level, and that is the thermodynamic work that is required to add one electron. And according to the model of the Chinese scientists, the Fermi surface of this compound LK99 has the shape of a rugby. These are uh, predicted letters parameters A and C, and the volume and band cap versus experimental data. And the experimental data is in yellow. 
one angstrom is 100 picometers and you can see um, the model fits nicely there is no big um, difference and this predicted band gap 2.77 means uh, that lead apatite is an insulator and here again this is LK99 copper doped numbers fit very nicely and the model predicts uh, for this compound to be a conductive uh, metal you can see the model was also applied to other metals with nickel and zinc uh, you don't get a superconductor you still have a band gap but with silver and gold um, they have a similar effect especially gold has a effect uh, that's very near to the uh, superconductor LK99 However, uh, their calculations uh, showed um, a smaller volume by 2.9% and experimental uh, value was about half percent. And according to this model, the, only the outer doped um, lead layer is conductive, the inner phosphate layer and the inner uh, lead layer are insulating. This is a Another work uh, from Liang Si and Carsten Held, that's the electron structure of LK99. They made a density functional calculation. And according to their um, calculation, um, the center oxide ions in the middle, um, they want a maximum distance from the copper ions. That's the, their predicted structure. Now this is a predicted uh, lattice parameters uh, by Liang C and Carsten Held. Uh, A and C, a unit cell volume versus experimental data, experimental data again in yellow. And you can see for lead appetite the values are very good. Yeah, a bit of this, this difference. Uh, but for LK99 the difference is a bit uh, bigger. But these are all models and um, uh, important features of the LK99 are two flat copper bands at Fermi level and hybrid orbitals. And according to the model, um, this uh, does not predict uh, diamagnetism, which is very good. And uh, these two scientists uh, suggest uh, derivatives of LK99 uh, with sulfur and phosphorus instead of oxygen. This is another work of Siniat uh, um, M. Griffin. According to this work, only the outer uh, lead ions are stereochemically active. Uh, the structural distortion by the copper ions from the doping uh, is driven by tilts of the phosphate ions. Um, there's another paper of uh, Rafael Curleto and his colleagues. Um, according to this paper, LK99 has an unusually flat copper oxide hybrid states are near the Fermi level and this gives it its high temperature superconductivity and it has a special electronic structure and um, according to their model there is no bind gap which is also very good. Uh, this is old technology of lead acid battery um, this is a very reliable technology but will be soon outdated because the line, uh, lithium ion battery is superior in density, energy density in my opinion, this, uh, old batteries could be a source um, maybe in the future for lanarkite, which is lead uh, sulf sulfate oxide. And there's one country in the world which is uh, leading in the recycling technologies. This is Germany. Uh, all the different countries, they have these different recycling rates. Usually, uh, recycled products are, have a much better environmental footprint than uh, mined products because you have a higher uh, density of these materials. And in my opinion, the uh, countries should uh, cooperate in this uh, big, resolve all these uh, big problems by combining their strengths. Um, this should be part of the development aid for other countries, in my opinion. Uh, we live in a great age, um, in the artificial intelligence age. And in my opinion, the, uh, in the near future, there will be new, uh, more materials with unusual properties like LK99. And in my opinion, this will happen in this uh, decade, in the 20s. And that was today's video about the new papers of LK99. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.